Hi, this is Craig Frazier, and I'm here in the beautiful downtown studios of Craytex Colors in East Granby, Connecticut, and we're here for another video, and this is going to be a cosplay video. This is a little bit something different. Uh, normally in the past, we've been painting on hard surfaces uh, using the automotive uh, versions of Craytex, or taking Craytex and making it into automotive versions using UVLS Clear, and working on non-absorbative reflective or hard surfaces, plastics as well as metals. Now we're going to do something, something different, uh, kind of halfway in between. It's kind of similar to doing a canvas or a painting or a t-shirt, yet at the same time it is a little bit of a dissimilar surface and it's a surface that actually gets used on like canvases. And we're talking about vans. Uh, that's close to automotive, it sounds like a van, but uh, we got a couple of vans right here and uh, I'm going to do some uh, mural work on it. We're going to do a uh, Tribute to classic horror movie uh, genre. In other words, let me see. I'll bring my picture up here. And where is it? It's not there. Da, 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 da. I had it somewhere. There it is. We're going to do a classic uh, version of Frankenstein, Boris Collis Frankenstein, and Bella Lugosi's. Dracula, uh, one on one foot, one on the other. I'm going to be using uh, Candy 2O Black, which has a little bit of a violet tint to it that we already know of. I'm also going to be adding just a smidgen of Tim Gore's Vascular Violet from the Bloodline series, which I use in a lot of my fine artwork. We will, uh, when we need to use white, we will be using the opaque white to come back in, uh, do, maybe do some touch-ups or highlights on there. And then uh, all of it's going to have a little bit of the 4050 gloss binder, because I kind of like the way that it, it works as a balance and clear a binder. For the top coat on these, we're going to go with either, I haven't decided yet, either going to go with the matte or we're going to go with the satin. Uh, you can also combine the two. If you spray something matte and you're like, man, that's way too flat, and then you decide you want a little bit shiner, you can always add a little bit of satin. You can always cocktail it. You can also go between satin and gloss. So we've got three of the UVLS clears that we may be using one or heck, a versions of all three as not just the the, the base binder for the color, but also the top sealer. The UVLS, besides being an automotive grade sealer, is highly flexible and works really, really good on canvas, uh, leather, and other types of um, flexible, yet not completely porous surfaces. Vans are kind of known for being sealed. You know, you, you, your deck shoes, you don't want to get too wet. But we're going to go ahead and uh, use the these paints. We'll work nicely on that. I'm also going to be jumping back and forth on a couple of different airbrushes. Uh, everything is fine as detail work. I may be using something like an Eclipse CS. May also be playing around with the Micron. And I have to have a PS771 I'm going to play around with from Spray Gunner. I'm going to give that a try. So we're going to try using some different tools, different paints, and doing something to make these plain white vans a little bit more interesting. Now, if you're wondering, do I'm just going to start airbrushing right away on it? No, I'm, I think I'm good. I'm not that good in this situation. I'm actually going to sketch it out first because that way if I make a mistake, I can change my mind and come back and erase on it. Uh, I use what's called a photo blue, non-photo blue pencil. I've been using these since the architecture days because you can make uh, changes to designs and when you go and you scan them, uh, the blue doesn't show up. Now in this case, we don't need that, but I just like the blue. It works really nice and, uh, and if it leaves a little bit of a mark behind, um, the violet color I'm going to be painting with, which is like a blackish violet, it's going to cover up the blue nicely. It also doesn't migrate like a pencil can and smear like a grease pencil can or literally show up later like a grease pencil can by denying any paint that sticks to it, hence the term grease. So if you've got something you want to sketch with, you can. Uh, charcoal pencils work good. Be careful to avoid things with wax and grease in them. And if you do use a grease pencil like a Stabilo, go with the one that has the word aqua somewhere on it. You want to use a water-based uh, and it works best. And that's not just for solvent or water-based paint. It works best all the time. Automotive solvent paste, I use water-based Stabilos. So I think we covered just about everything. And of course, uh, everything we're going to be reducing here will be done with 4011 because that's all I use. You're wondering what this is over here for, 4020. That's my cleaner. I use that to clean the heck out of my airbrushes because it's a little bit more caustic and works really, really well for that. I think we've covered everything. I'm Oh, one more thing. Probably going to use Gerald Mendez's text, texture stencil. Why? Because I think I use this pretty much on everything known to mankind. It's my favorite stencil. So that's it. We've covered everything. Let me get to sketching and I will see you back in a second. 
Okay, I've got my two sketches done up, if you can see that. I'm just going to really have an up-close portrait of Frankenstein and uh, Dracula right there. And um, did it all in that blue pencil. Now, if you get worried about, like, do, you do a little sketch and it's make a mistake, you can always erase it. Now, you want to be really careful working on fabric. You can erase on fabric, especially canvas. I, I choose to use one of these little uh, white architectural eraser. Uh, it comes in a pen so you can, you know, make more coming out or whatever. And uh, go, go real lightly, you can take it off. But I only use a little bit when I actually want to change a mouth placement or something. If I'm going to be going back over a, an area uh, with um, a darker ink or a darker color, I don't worry about the pencil mark. It's going to be covered up anyway. And so these blue pencils cover up very nicely with any kind of paint, water base or solvent. So I'm going to start, uh, well, my favorite character of all time is Frankenstein, so I'm going to start with him. So I'll put Bella off to the side right here. And um, you may want to, we, we probably are going to end up having to get, get up off the sticks to go check this one out because I can't airbrush like this. Um, I'd like to, but that, that just doesn't work. So I'm going to tilt the shoe up here and actually start working on it. Okay, now um, I've got my, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try this uh, little PS771 by Spray Gunner. And uh, I've got it loaded up with my color, which was a combination of uh, Black candy, a little bit, actually about black candy and Tim Gore's Vascular Violet one to one and then, and then the UVLS 4050 with some 4011 reducer. Whenever you're spraying, uh, always make sure the airbrush is working by spraying in an area that doesn't matter as much. In other words, an area that's going to be getting a lot of dark paint anyway. So if you make a mistake, you can always come in and hit it. And I kind of make sure the airbrush is playing good, making nice. I'm going to go do that rivet, no, not rivet, but like the clamp or the stamp on the top of his head, the staple, that's what it is, the staple. And I'm just going to squiggle along, playing with the hair, getting used to this brush. I'm going to be getting used to the brush, not just because it's a new brush I haven't really used much before, but any brush that you just picked up, even your best, your most favorite brush in the world, you got to get used to it with the paint and everything in there, make sure it's flowing good. Now you may look at this and think, oh, that's mostly just black. It's hardly any uh, purple at all. No, it's, it's, it's a black candy, so it is going to be. And then uh, every now and then a little chunky gets in there. I always keep the rag in my hand so I can pick the needle. But see, if I fog it real lightly, it has a little bit of a violet tint to it. That's what I want. I want it to look like one of those old movie uh, plates. It has a little bit of a violet, bluish violet tint to it. As you see, I've been just slowly building up. Same exact color. I'm not changing color up at all. And uh, there's, I haven't used any white yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to. And there's two reasons you want to use white. Uh, one, to fix something you screwed up. And two, because it needs it. At this point right now, I haven't done either. Knock on wood. Hopefully I won't screw up now. Or that'd be perfect opportunity. Bam. And I just say I screwed up for the video. You know, to help you people out. Anyway, uh, very carefully coming along and doing up his mouth there. And you'll notice that the, the paint, you get it down there, it looks nice and black, and then you come back a couple minutes later, it's a little bit, little bit less black. Well, some of it absorbs into that, into that uh, white van. You may also work on a van or a shoe that, or something that actually has some texture or some uh, that, that'll absorb more, or it might have a dye that's not fully fully cured and that might reactivate. So you may think the, the white is fading. It's actually just drawing dye up from the bottom. Well, not white's fading, but the color's fading. It's just drawing up dye. But right now I'm pretty happy about the white. I kind of like to be able to do it without any white at all for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, it has a certain nice look to it. It's all just free-handed in that respect. And secondly, it's less work for me. And less issues. The less paint you can actually use on something, the better. And just keep building that color slowly but surely. Do some texture down here in the bottom of the chin. And then the coloring and the darkness and the way I did this is going to determine how I do Dracula. Even though two, two separate characters, I don't want the shoes to completely mismatch. So. The tonal quality, everything that I'm doing right here is going to be duplicated on the next piece. 
Okay, as you see, I've uh, finished up the Frankenstein, and you can't see any of the blue uh, pencil marks at all, so I didn't even need to really come in with any white or add any highlights. So I'm going to keep keep it this monochromatic, literally just using one color. And I had some smoke around here, and just kind of freehanded it in, being careful. I, it was too much of a pain to mass it off, so I just came in very carefully with the airbrush. I'll show you how right here. I literally just make sure it's spraying good, and then I'll come in and just blend very softly. Don't use too much. It's like I'm doing a fine detail line, but I'm holding it back a little ways away. And then start at the bottom and just kind of blend up a little bit of smoke. I don't want to get right up against them because I want the contrast that he has against the white of the shoe. And then I'll come along here and do the same thing. I won't come all the way up into the Vans logo. Come along here, a little bit up there, a little smoke. And I'm also going to use the stencil. I'll come up here, place that stencil lightly right there and maybe just a little bit, not much. Just see how you can get a cool effect going on there. And I'll bring that around. Let me prop this up on the, some tape. And then I'll come along here and do the exact same thing, but just very, very lightly, not much paint at all. I just want a real subtle effect. And kind of rotate that all the way around the shoe. If you look a little area that you looks like you missed, you can go back and hit it again. Nice thing about coming in very lightly is you can always come back in and add more. You do it heavy, a little bit more difficult to take apart. Now, I'm going to carefully, I want to add some stipple just to, for fun. So I'm going to angle the shoe so the stipple's not going to get on the rest of the shoe and kind of hit it. I want to splatter back here just because it's kind of cool looking. And not go all the way forward with it. I kind of keep my hand there to protect the rest of the artwork. I just want it mostly just back here. It almost looks like dirt, so some of you actually think your shoe's kind of dirty. But I do that stipple there, and then along the sides, there's no more stipple. It's just the portrait. Now, I could unmask it right now, but I still have to put a coat of sealer on it. So this paint is definitely, uh, it, it will cross-link after 48 hours, but it's still going to be even tougher if we put that UVLS clear on it. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and do a matte. So I mixed up the mat with about maybe 5% reducer, and I pre-mix it ahead of time and let it sit. You want at least 15 minutes, so I'm going to let that sit. It'll probably end up be sitting like half an hour. It'll still be okay. It'll be fine. Um, I'm going to put this aside and start working on the Bell Lugosi shoe next. So I'm pretty happy with the way this one is right now. Okay, I'm going to come in and start working on Bella, and I do the exact same thing. Even though I've been using this airbrush a little while, today on Frank, I want to make sure it's spraying good, so I'm going to come in from the edge. And I'm glad I did that, because I had a little tip dry. So I pulled the trigger back, and I got a little reducer on this rag. There we go. So see, even though I've been using it, I, I still made sure that I always spray it in an area that is in, not that important, you know. And then I'm going to come in, that's the cape behind his head, come in real dark with that. I'm not worried about that now, I'll finish that later. I also leave dark areas alone for when my airbrush is acting up. Instead of me having to clear the airbrush and, and with my fingertips, sometimes I'll just move over to a darker area and really hit it hard in that dark area. And it self-cleans and it also takes care of part of the painting. So uh, a little way of saving time without having to always be paint picking the tip of your airbrush. So a lot of times these paints, when blasted full blast, will self-clean themselves. So I'm doing his hair right now, just soft strokes, and it also kind of gets me, you know, back used to this brush again. And uh, when the room gets warmer and your paint's been sitting, it actually will start acting like a different brush. You can, that's when you start deciding, should I add more reducer? You know, do I need to get more paint? And these are all questions you want to be able to, you'll be asking in your head. That's another thing. When you're painting, always think of what you're painting. How's the airbrush working? Do I, do, what, could, how could it be better? If you're thinking of something else, then all of a sudden that's when problems happen because you don't see them coming. Otherwise, you'll see the problems coming before they even get to you. Very happy with that, that hair is going. Now, if you look at the image right here, you'll see there's this line. One of the things he did with Dracula that was totally un unique at the time was he just cast a light right on his eyes to make them emphasize, a little bit of bar of light. So I'm going to mimic that right here and just 
literally create a, a soft violet above his head and then right here below, right across the bottom bridge of his nose so that it's just going to be naturally lighter there no matter what. And following the jawline over here, taking care of the ear. Remember, go soft because you can always add paint, but in this situation, I, want, I need to make this mimic my other shoe. So if I screw this shoe up and have to add white, I may have to go over to Frankenstein to add some white to balance it, because the white, you may think, oh, yeah, but the van, vans are white. Different white. It's a different type of white, so I may have to go in and add highlights over there. So I'm being extra cautious not to make any more mistakes than <laughs> naturally happen which is kind of funny with me because I kind of known for making mistakes. I turn them into things. I always make jokes, tell people that the, a, good, a good artist makes a mistake and the client never knows that a great artist makes a mistake and charges more. So, putting that brush cleared out again, coming in, doing some of the inner brown underneath his eyebrow. And then we got the pupil right there, and of course his eye, the retina right there. This PS771 is a very nice little brush, doing qu quite a good job here. And of course Kratex always does a great job. That's why I absolutely love the black candy. And so even in mixing it up with a little bit of Tim Gore's, uh, bloodline, that vascular violet gives it just enough body and control and that little bit of a violet touch. It's just a little bit, you know, has that certain classic look to it. Anyone that's seen my other Frankensteins that I've done, I always use this mixture when I'm doing that old film noir look. double line above his eye and it drops down like that so I don't, I don't want to miss that up and then he has a little bit of a bag under his eye just a little you know so people say oh take the bags out from under my eye well yeah unless it stops making you look like who you are then you need that so very happy with that eye right now and I'm going to continue building up the color Put a little cheekbone action in there even if it's in the light area you still want the cheekbone action and we'll keep on working on this and then eventually get to the other side of Bell Lugosi's face and then we'll do some more shots from there. Okay, you see I got the majority of the work done on, uh, on Bella here. Make sure I get my airbrush tip clean. And I'm gonna come in and just finish off some of the last of the dark violet tone around where his jacket is, a little bit of his his pendant showing right there, and then a little bit of shadow on his neck, and then of course his trademark you know, cleft in his chin, his dimple in his chin right there. And I'm pretty happy with the way Bella turned out. Every now a little bit of black here and there in the hair, just to I clean it up. There's a little bit of a blue line. I can see a little bit of my pencil line over there, so I'm going to increase his hair out to the outside, and that eliminates that blue without me having to erase it. And then, just like I did on the other one, I'm going to come in and freehand just a little bit, very, very small amount. Take your time and build up that gradation in the, in the violet very subtly up there, and then, of course, on the side as well. I'm gonna do my smoke effect. I kind of like have a little, little bit of smoke coming up there, just like the Frankenstein. I can see it over there in the corner of my eye. Stay away from Bella. We want to make sure his contrast kind of dominates that part of the shoe. And this part, the smokes are fairly simple. I can do it one-handed. And then continue all the way around the shoe. 
with that smoke effect. Now, we need to remember the, the process we did the last one in. We did the smoke, and then we came in with the Gerald Mendez texture stencil, and we did that. So I'm going to get the smoke up to the same level that we had on Frank, and then I carefully, I use two hands here because I'm getting close and I don't want overspray to get on that little border of the shoe right there. And then of course we grab our texture stencil and we do the exact same thing we did with Frank. Very small amount, you don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. I put my tape underneath that to hold it up. Continue all the way around on the back. We've got a lot of depth, a lot of cool look, a lot of cool effects out of one color and one airbrush without having to clean it out. And we cannot forget our stippling on the back. Remember, we did that on, the, on Frank. I'm going to do the same thing here. So they both look the same. And the one thing I didn't do on Frank, I'm going to do on this one, is I'm going to sign my name on the back of this one right here. So I want to get this nice and comfortable. I'll get my leg up here so I can steady this table, which likes to rock a little bit. I'll steady the table with my foot. And then come in for my signature. As you can see, this PS771 is doing quite nice. I didn't have my normal mic on here with me. It's back in Bakersfield, so this one actually worked out quite well. And that's it. Signature's done. And I'm quite happy with the way this, this guy came out. Now the next step, of course, is to uh, clear coat these. So I'm going to go ahead and clean out my, uh, my airbrush right here and give it a once over, make sure I didn't miss anything. And then we'll come right back and you can watch me put a nice coat of sealer on these shoes. Okay, I went and gave us a once over on these shoes and didn't see any areas need to be touched up. Um, I've got my mixture of UVLS uh, 4052, which is the matte clear in here I'm going to use. And uh, using my TH2, a uh, trusty uh, fan head gun, one of my favorite guns for small uh, spray work. And uh, definitely make sure the fan head's on it when spraying it. And I'm going to come in and just put a light coat over all the artwork. Not a lot. Remember, there's a candy in here, even though it is encapsulated in with UVLS clear as well as some vascular violet. It is a dye by nature, and what it can do is, we're not going to put any colors on top of this. We're not worried about that kind of bleeding. What we don't want to do is to swell. And what a swell is, is that when literally the, the moisture gets into the candy and it just starts swelling out, and it can puddle out on the design. So we don't want that to happen. You also want to keep air flowing over it. No heat, use a fan, just let it dry. Unlike a hard surface where everything's wet on top, when it's dry, it really is dry. On canvas or any kind of cloth, the moisture goes inside as well as sits on top. So when you dry it, it's got to dry on both sides. Now, it can also dry much faster, appear to, because of the fact that it's absorbing. Let's say when you're done clearing this, you want to put a scotch guard on it. Some people scotch guard their shoes. You can do it. I recommend doing it on top of the UVLS clear. Just because it gives us an axe to added protection. This is a very warm room, so I'm going to go ahead and just put another coat on here. This is a little bit more of a wet coat, but I'm not going for, well, for one thing, I'll never get a shine on this, and I'll tell you why. We're using the matte. Anyone that's used the UVLS 4052 matte, this, this will just suck all the shine out of a room. It is the most matte clear out there. It's great, and that's what I want. I, I don't want this to look like I have some shiny paint on it. I just really want this just to protect my artwork. So if anything gets on it, you know, I mean, granted, you could soak something in it, it's gonna, you know, probably damage the shoe in general, the same way if you soaked your canvas shoe in any, anything. But I want there to be able to, you know, anything gets on it, you can wipe it off right away. A little dirt on there, no problem. 
I'll let this dry. And I might put one more coat on. I haven't decided. I'm going to let it dry and then take a look at it. So we'll see, and uh, we'll see how many coats we need to get. I'd say at the very most, you want to put like maybe, because I'm doing light coats, I'd say three to four at the most. Right now I have two. So uh, we'll come back, and I'll be done with the clear. I'll unmask these, and they'll be ready to unveil. Okay, as you see, I got them all nice and unmasked, and they're dry, and that matte clear is definitely matte. Uh, it leaves no shine in the can whatsoever, and that's exactly what I wanted. If you want a little bit more of a shine to it, you can always go with the 4051 satin or even the 4050 gloss. And as you notice, we only used really uh, one color, uh, but it was a combination of colors. It was the candy black, it was the vascular violet, and it was a little bit of UVLS 4050 and some 4011. And then uh, I, I did this all just, uh, we didn't use any white. Remember, we decided we'd not, we didn't need any. And I only used one airbrush, PS 771 by Spray Gunner. Came out really good. So we got one airbrush, one color, one set of vans, and literally 30 minutes each done in one hour. So hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more uh, me painting vans or shoes, let me know. Uh, give me some suggestions. Write in say, hey, paint this, hey, paint that. I am going to be back. I am going to be painting some different designs. I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't know what they are yet. I kind of make it up as I go along. So, uh, but we're definitely going to be showing you not just on vans, but also on leather because Kratex works not just well on automotive surfaces, wood, canvas, t-shirt, wall murals, you name it, guitars, uh, just about everything, including leather. And, uh, and we're going to show you that in these videos. So until next time, my name is Craig Frazier and from the Kratex studios here in East Granby, Connecticut. I will see you next time.